Do you have lethargic shrimp that will not come to a feeding dish? Do you ever have massive die-offs of shrimp in your tank? Do you have masses of algae that annoy the hell out of you? Well today I'm going to show you guys how to make the simple but very effective H2O2 doser and it's coming right up. If this is your first time here and you want to learn more about shrimp keeping in general and breeding them and all that good stuff then please hit that subscribe button and bell notification so you never miss another video. But before that guys can you please let me know in the comments section if you have had bother with things like algae, lethargic shrimp etc and how did you manage to overcome it. So let's start by telling you guys exactly what you will need to build this H2O2 doser. Okay, so we are going to start with the container because it's probably the most important thing that you will need to find and source for yourself. Right, so guys, whatever it is that you choose to use, make sure it's food grade material. Okay, so like this one, for example, was from a spice rack, right? So I know that this one is a food grade, right? So it's up to you if you want to choose glass or plastic. Um, glass is probably a little bit better in that it weighs something compared to the plastic, but... As you guys will have seen in my other uh, intro part of the video there, but I showed you the larger version of this. Um, it's very hard to get a container that kind of size with a good plastic lid, right? So use what you can, just make sure it is food grade. Marbles, these are going to be our weight, right? There's no uh, bottom on, the, on this that's going to be super heavy with it will weigh it down. We're actually going to use the marbles to put inside the jar to weigh it down, right? So this is how simple and easy this is going to be to make. Hydrogen peroxide, this is also food grade, uh, this is 3% that I bought online. Make sure guys, whatever one you use that is not mouthwash, okay? You will also need a tiny catalyst, right? And this one is made from um, coat hanger wire, right? So I think you could probably use stainless steel wire as well, but I just use what I have lying around. And this piece is 2 to 3 millimeters in length. I have used um, longer parts than this before and a previous video that I made about two years ago in an oxygen generator. For the amount that we are using it lasted for months right so we don't want the H2O2 to spend itself too fast so use a little piece at a time just see how you go. The other things that you will make, need to make this is a pair of pliers, this is just so you don't burn your fingers because we are going to put a couple of little holes in the lid of this jar here and we'll need a needle and a lighter. Now before I get onto the DIY part of this as well, I just want to basically tell you guys how this is going to work. Um, I have other videos on how this works as well which I'll probably link in the description too. But I think it's important that you understand how this works before you go ahead and build it. Right? So we're going to fill this up with um, H2O2 and we're going to add a catalyst. Remember the little catalyst I just talked to you guys about? We're going to add that into the bottom here, right? And what that will do is the H2O2 will react with the catalyst and it will form pure oxygen. The O2 bubbles will rise to the top and this little air gap at the top here will get bigger and bigger and it will force out H2O2 in the bottom plate here, right? And this is why we have to add a couple of little holes, which we're going to do right now. Okay, so this part is just a little bit awkward for me to film because I'm so tall compared to the table, but let's just try our best, shall we? Okay, so get your pliers, grip your needle like so, and you want, guys, you want to heat this up until it's red, red hot. Alright, so get the point, heat up until it's very, very red. Like this, you can see it's starting to go red in the end. And what we're going to do here, guys, is we're going to put this into the top of the lid. And we want two to three holes. All right, just pick it up, plunge it in. See how easy that goes through? I'm going to go for two holes here. Right, do you see them there? I'm not sure you ever will be able to see these on this camera. There you go, you probably can just see them there. Right, and these holes are the holes where the H2O2 will escape from once it's being forced out by the oxygen at the top. We're going to add the marbles, and these are just to weigh the vessel down, right? So. I have a little box of marbles here. I bought these. I bought quite a lot of them for um, a few dollars. And this is something, guys, that you will just have to uh, try and judge for yourself how many marbles that you will add to your little vessel. But it's always better, I notice, to add one or two more than you think you will need, right? And we will test this right now. Okay. 
to see. Will it sink or float? Tell me in the comments. Sink or float? Sink or float? Right, so that sunk quite easily. Let's have a little look. And it has uh, no fluid in it at all. So this is all oxygen. I'm pretty sure this is enough to keep this sunk as well. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to open it back up. We're going to take it out. And we're going to add the catalyst and the H2O2. Let's see, right, so we're going to add our little catalyst. Look, let's see, will you guys be able to see that? It is in there, I assure you. You see it right there. And then we're going to add our H2O2. Right now, and this, as I said before, this is 3% food grade H2O2. You can use a 6%. In an aquarium I do believe as well, but guys when, when you use this stuff just be careful, don't use anything that's like over 6% because you, you will be risking your shrimp's lives doing it that way, okay? So when you're adding this, fill it up until it's about 80 to 90% full, you want a little air gap in the top because this is going to help us um, create a vacuum in the container when it comes up, when it goes upside down basically. And the, the why we need a vacuum, guys, is because um, if there is no vacuum, the fluid will flow straight out. Now, there, there might be a little bit comes out, we've just been a little bit lucky there, nothing is coming, coming out. But if you don't have this uh, vacuum gap like this at the top, um, the fluid would basically flow straight out of the jar, right? So you need this little vacuum gap. Um, once the, the oxidation process starts as well, um, there will be less drippage. There's a tiny bit of drippage there. You see it on my hand? A tiny bit of drippage. Um, it will get less and less, right? And don't be scared of uh, food grade H2O2 at this concentration. 3 to 6% does absolutely nothing to your skin or your hands, and it's commonly used as a disinfectant. All right, so I wonder if we can possibly see the catalyst in here. I don't actually. Maybe we can. I'm going to try and put it in a container here. We might be able to get some footage of the bubbles coming up if we're lucky. There you go, there is a very, very simple and very, very effective DIY H2O2 doser. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, like and all the good stuff, and I will catch you all in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. Happy shrimp keeping.